let's let's move on I, i want to go to the second part of this show thank you mr pullarao but i just want to go to the second part i, I know you won't be too surprised if i told you that the congress party has attacked national icon veer savarkar calling him a communalist and beef eater who did not oppose cow slaughter you won't be surprised because trolling savarkar sometimes with thin facts and broad slander has become quite the congress thing it has also been pulled up by the courts congress has effectively built savarkar as the communal bogeyman in the secular liberal imagination this is an effective ploy to consolidate the minority vote before elections it's a cynical one but you may flinch viewers a little if i told you that the same congress while slandering savarkar has gone on to give jina a secular billing that's right karnataka congress minister dinesh gundurao has in fact certified jina the father of the two nation theory the man who wanted to create an exclusive preserve on the subcontinent for muslims because he thought they couldn't get along with hindus as a secular modernist because guess why viewers he ate pork this is patently absurd logic is the congress party trying to say that it regards only those muslims who eat pork as modernists is the congress party trying to say that those muslims who don't eat pork are communalists are in some way primitive I mean this low grade discourse is offensive to Muslims and all Muslims today should protest in unison. This is what Karnataka minister Dinesh Gundurao has said. He said quote Savarkar was a Brahmin but he ate beef and was a non-vegetarian. He did not oppose cow slaughter. In fact, he was quite a modernist on that topic. So viewers just think about it if you eat beef as a Hindu and you oppose and and you oppose in some ways or you're pro in some ways cow slaughter you're a modern hindu then he went on to say savarkar was nationalist but his fundamentalism is different from india's culture jinnah was a hardcore islamist with some claiming that he even ate pork jinnah became an icon for muslims he was never a fundamentalist but savarkar was now the family of veer savarkar is livid and is threatening to sue the congress party and its minister in karnataka ranjit savarkar vidi savarkar's grandson has said this is a strategy of congress to defame savarkar time and again namely when elections are coming rahul gandhi was doing it and now his leaders are making statements congress wants to divide the hindu society this is like the british policy of divide and rule i'm going to file a defamation suit unquote this is what the family is saying the bjp has slammed the congress for undermining a bharatiya icon because it is blinded by its love for pakistan the congress has stuck to its guns but what do the hard facts say viewers and on this show the hard facts rule because i want you to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff viewers did vinayak damodar savarkar support cow slaughter and was he a fundamentalist here's the first hard fact savarkar described those who carried out cow slaughter as part of their dharma in other words he's alluding to muslims and other faiths as given to court excessive barbarism ingratitude and an asuric or demonic instinct unquote and this has been catalogued by vaibhav purandre the true story of father of hindutva in his book hard fact 2 court the cow is the sacred symbol of our national identity and its protection is a bounden duty of every hindu unquote this is hindu rashtra darshan 1935 of veer savarkar Hard fact three: Quote: The cow is not just an animal, but a mother, a symbol of our nation's prosperity and sincerity. Unquote. Speech in Bombay in 1934, when Bombay was still referred to as Bombay. Hard fact four: Hinduism and cow protection are inseparable. The Indian War of Independence, 1909, that Savarkar penned. Hard fact five: The protection of cow is a fundamental tenet of Hinduism, and its slaughter is a betrayal of our national heritage. Unquote. Speech in Nagpur, 1938. so clearly viewers clearly he was against cow slaughter we must not only prevent cow slaughter but also work towards eradicating the very idea of it from our society unquote and he wrote a letter to gandhi in 1927 and of course as you know the congress went on in independent india and passed a large number of legislations against cow slaughter in fact while savarkar may have advocated for a hindu rashtra but he did not intend it to be a hindu rajya there's a difference a hindu state or a religious theocracy where there was no place for religions a nation as opposed to a state how can i say this this is veer savarkar in his own words 
Let the Indian state be purely Indian. Let it not recognize any invidious distinctions whatsoever as regard the franchise, public service offices, taxation on the grounds of religion and race. Let no cognizance be taken whatsoever of man, being Hindu or Muslim, Christian, Sikh or Jew. Let all citizens be treated according to their individual worth, irrespective of religious or racial percentage in the general population, unquote. Go look up Lok Sabha Secretariat, the parliament papers there, February 2003, and you'll see this, viewers. 2003. And now, what about Jinnah? Is the Congress right in labelling him secular? Let's turn to the hard facts once again. These suggest that Jinnah was communal and had begun to also espouse a theocratic vision for the Pakistani state. Here's a hard fact one. On the nature of what the Pakistani state should be like, Jinnah on 25th January 1948, in an address to the Karachi Bar Association, declared that 1300 years ago the issue was solved and the Pakistan constitution would be framed in the light of Islamic Sharia. It's not the words of a fundamentalist, viewers. It's the word of a theocrat. And they are saying that Veer Savarkar was a fundamentalist. Hard fact too, Islam is not only a religious doctrine, but also a code of conduct, a way of life, unquote. Speech at Lahore, 1940, before independence. You know what followed after the Lahore Declaration, viewers. Hard fact three, Quote, Pakistan was created to provide a homeland for Muslims where they could live according to their own laws and traditions. This is a broadcast to the people of the United States in 1948. In sharp contrast to what Savarkar said. Viewers, it is preposterous that this claim has been made to besmirch a Bharatiya icon but raise the level of a complete theocrat. So what if you ate some pork? Let's open this up. Let's ask some questions. And I want to first begin with Tehseen Punawala. And Pradeep Bhandari is here with us. Tehseen Punawala, the Congress wants to hug Pakistani generals. The Congress wants to call Pakistani prime ministers Greek gods. The Congress wants to talk and open trade links with the same Pakistan that is hosting right now as we speak a demonic character who tried to divide India called Zakir Nayak, a hate preacher that's wanted by the Indian law. The Congress party also now, like one particular BJP leader who paid the price because the BJP itself punished him. Today, the Congress party, which criticized Jinnah, is celebrating this man as a great secular leader. What's gone wrong with the Congress party? Rahul, good evening. Thank you for having me on the The answer a very happy Navaratri to all my fellow panelists, to all your viewers, and to you and your family as well. Um, Jinnah is not, was not, can ever be secular. He can never be the hero for any Indian ever. And the only person to go down on his mazar and do sajda and call him secular in Pakistan was the then BJP president, El Kedwani. And I do accept that the BJP took action against him. The only person to write books eulogizing Jinnah was BJP leaders. The only people that call ISI into Pathan court on the dead bodies of our strong, brave energy soldiers was the present Indian Union government. They call the ISI filth into India. Those who have attacked us. Zakir Naik is an Indian citizen, a man of hate who spreads venom. He's still an Indian citizen, wanted in Pakistan. And yes, I do aspire for my nation to be a superpower. Look at what Israel did to that Nasrallah and where they sent him. An Indian state has not even raised an objection to an Indian citizen being hugged and kissed and uh, celebrated by Pakistan. I am telling you, Pradeep is here, one of the most erudite BJP spokesperson. Tell him to go and tell Amit Shah Ji and Modi Ji to step down if they can't run the government. Okay. You need powerful people to run the government. This is a weak government. And as I weak say, government, the spy of Walter Neckler. At least Tehseen Punawala has had the gumption to come out and differ with the Congress Mantri's point of view, Pradeep Bhandari. Yes. But what he didn't tell us, and he accepts that the BJP took action against LK Advani, removed him from his presidentship, he had to go. And he was pretty much cast into oblivion after that, we know that. But he will not answer whether the Congress will take action against Gundu Rao, the minister there. Pradeep Bhandari. Uh, Rahul, thank you so much for having me on your show and uh, Navratri greetings to all your viewers. May Ma Shail Putri protect everybody in the country. Rahul, uh, just to come on the main point, 
uh, Veer Savarkar was an unalloyed nationalist, an unapologetic Hindu, and he stood for everything wrong which was with the Congress party, in particular Jawaharlal Nehru, which was the vote bank politics. Veer Savarkar reminded this country that vote bank politics will be a sin. Nehru did not listen. Still today we are suffering from this vote bank politics compulsion. Veer Savarkar spoke about a strong India. Veer Savarkar envisioned a threat of China, envisioned a threat of Pakistan. Nehru did Hindi, Chini, Bhai Bhai and Nehru had a weak strategy towards Pakistan. In fact, Veer Savarkar was such big a patriot, uh, Rahul, that Bhagat Singh in his Young Liberation in October 1928 writes, Vinayak Savarkar as poet of patriotism and prophet of nationalism and a life of an Indian revolutionary leader. The Congress party, Rahul Genesis, hates every patriotic revolutionary leader, whether it is Bhagat Singh, whether it is Subhash Chandra Bose, whether it is Veer Savarkar or whether it is any leader who was not from the Gandhi Nehru dynasty. That is the essence of the problem. Now let me come to point number two, which is what Tehseen said. Tehseen should be reminded of the fact that Digvijay Singh hugged Zakir Nayak. It was in the time of the Congress party. Here you have a UAPA charge against Zakir Nayak. That is point number two. Point number three, Tehseen spoke about an, uh, what Israel did to the Nasrullah. The Congress party opposed the surgical strike which was done by the Bharatiya Janata Party led government backed by a force, completely done by a forces, backed by a strong government. It is the Congress party which questions our forces. So Tehseen should call Mr. Rahul Gandhi who makes the people of India, uh, you know, always question our national patriotism and tell Mr. Rahul Gandhi to stand with national integrity. And let me tell you, Rahul, that the Congress party right now is in the hand of extreme left fringe. If you remember very, very clearly, Indra Gandhi, at least to an extent, had to write a letter and said that Veer Savarkar is the proud Indian son. And Veer Savarkar had envisioned and he had famously quoted and said, Pakistan ke do tukde honge and that is what had happened but, but, but in particular Rahul Gandhi is doing everything which is purely and purely vote bank and I tell you Rahul you spoke about hard fact the hard fact here is that the Congress party will never ever back a freedom fighter who was not from the Nehru lineage. That is the essence of the problem because Just the Nehru correction. lineage is a vote bank lineage. One second, one second. Abhijit, Just one correction. No, one second. I'll, I'll Just come one back. Correction. One Just second. One correction. I'll come back to it. Just, Just less than 10 seconds. Nehru ji not only met Bhagat Singh in jail, Bhagat Singh ji refused legal uh, representation. But more importantly, Subhash Chandra Bose named, uh, named a unit of his army after Nehru ji. You come on TV and say anything about Nehru ji, yes. the man who spent the most amount okay. of... Okay, this is not about Nehru. Ambedkar, Bharat Ratna for years. Yeah, this is not about Nehru. This is not about Nehru. Let's not Nehru get divorced. No, no, just one second. This is Indian. not about Nehru. This is about the Savarkar. Yes. This is about Savarkar. This is about the lies that are spread about yes. Savarkar. This is about a Congress party who said that Savarkar took money, pensions, yes. from uh, the British. So did the Bose brothers, viewers. Will the Congress now stand up and call them cowards? Where were the Bose brothers? They were in the Congress party. There were other leaders of the Congress viewers who took stipends from the British. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, if anyone that is doing Hindu-Muslim today in this country, mm. some people are accusing the Congress of it. Do you agree with me or do you feel that I'm wrong here? Look, the person who has said it specifically fits the category of people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. All right. Uh, Dinesh Gundu Rao's wife, Tabassum, is a Muslim. I think he needs to first answer if she eats pork. Because if not, what does that make him and her? Realistically, are they members of ISIS if they don't eat pork? Is this the standard of uh, religious loyalty we've come down to in this country? Are they backward people? So, Dinesh of all people shouldn't have opened his mouth on this subject. All right, number one. Number two, Savarkar at some point, we need to understand, I don't know why people don't get this. You see, the Hindutva movement has had three separate strands to it. The first is the progressive socialistic strand, which was uh, 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 Savarkar, who wanted, you know, social change to be shoved down people's throats. The second was the conservative strand under Hedge Var, who believed that society had to be made ready bottoms up for social change. And the third are the trads who have been irrelevant, nobody's nonsense people on the fringes of Hindutva, who have never won a single election within Hindutva, 
and mostly uh, start off calling themselves you know hindutvavadis but end up going to the congress voting congress or becoming congress mps and things like that now did savarkar support defeating at one point in his life absolutely yes all right he did say at one point that this was indeed uh, you know it it was foolish for hindutva to pin itself on yeah. uh, bp he evolved his views you know not everybody is like a bangalore based fact checker whose brain is constantly stuck in the 7th century you see people evolve even during their lifetimes i mean there's a certain community that hasn't evolved since the 7th century but other people evolve during their lifetimes you know i used to be a communist i am now a capitalist uh, you know i used to uh, uh, hate israelis and jews at one point now i like them a lot uh so you know this is this kind of a lack of mental evolution this kind of ossification uh this is the it shows the ossification of dinesh gundu rao and his party yeah, they support I mean, this remember they financially support the fact checker in bangalore let's not forget that they coordinate with him yeah people so, do evolve you're right people evolve i mean look at rajiv gandhi opposed the caste census and his son yes. bats for it like there is no tomorrow clearly someone has evolved i don't know if one is regressed or the other one evolved but certainly someone went back in time or someone went forward in time i can't say in fact if i were an objective viewer i would say that rahul gandhi has gone back in time but nonetheless mr bas i want to ask you you are, you live in karnataka i want to ask you you are an indian muslim a patriotic indian muslim is jinnah a hero for you would you categorize him as a secular figure because he ate pork I'm I'm so glad, Rahul Sahab, that you asked me this question. Uh, my friend Tehsin here is very well aware of my stand on Jinnah. Jinnah is somebody I do not look up to and highly condemn. He divided I, in India fact, I remember for his own selfish reason. When Allow in Aligarh, complete. no, I remember when in Aligarh Muslim University they put up the uh, portrait of Jinnah. I remember you being on the show and saying, "Yes, I, will I not condemned it. it. I condemned it. Yeah. Absolutely wrong to do that because." a man of his own selfish political reasons divided my beautiful country of india that is my stand on jinnah now coming to the good question no but so Rahul, i'm asking you, i think, so d- I think should mr gundu rao does mr gundu rao make an impression hmm. on you or should he be sacked forthwith by the congress now, with party with respect to dinesh dinesh yeah. gundu rao mr abhijit ayer mitra stated the same thing he said that yes there are records there are documents which say that mr savarkar was not averse to eating beef abhijit ayer mitra is a responsible man and rahul shushankar how do you allow this man to come on television and say there is one community which has not evolved i dare you to name the community abhijit ayer mitra what kind what are you trying to say are you trying to no, say no, the muslim mr. community Abbas, has not you evolved you misunderstood him What, no, no, why don't you come in here? why don't you come in no this is a very clever attempt now to try and change the discourse please come in no 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 please let him come in let him clarify you ask you ask let him clarify let him clarify let him clarify let him clarify yes there was beef in the tirupati laddu did you see anybody getting beaten which community clarify i am coming i am coming darling quiet now my turn to talk on the other hand when there was some insult to the nabi 2 years back one member of your community put out the call everybody came out on the street with sartan se juda hmm. now can i ask that was no, your can i ask you no one second can, can I, your I community you can i ask you do one you, second you remember Mr. the video do you remember the video of the tailor having his He's head locked me. off on tv can i No, no, one second, Mr. Abbas. One second, one second, Mr. Abbas. You remember Abbas. the video, gentlemen, gentlemen. One second, gentlemen. One second, gentlemen. One second, one second. Look, we don't want to make this communal, but Mr. Abbas, I think if you have a problem, you should have a problem with Mr. Gundu Rao, who mm. says that Jinnah was a modernist because he used to eat pork. Are you, mm. sir, not a modernist, Mr. Abbas? Okay. Now let me please answer. answer. Let me, don't you think this is objectionable? Answer. to an indian let muslim me answer that. that because you let eat because that. you don't eat pork you are supposedly living in some last century and you're not a modernist isn't that no, bizarre no, let me answer that and yes. why should let you take it on Bounce up. Bounce why don't you take it on clear. mr abbas it's clear on your show it's clear on cnn on your show on record that abhijit ayer mitra has stated that the muslim community has not evolved let this is, this is wrong and since Please, you, this is wrong you have not evolved no, 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 one second one second no, mr abbas mr abbas, abbas you don't are, do this you don't are do this tonight control no one has said Lord one second one second ayer ayer mitra one second ayer mitra one second let me first tell you viewers that the words are being twisted here out of proportion and even tehsin will testify that words are being tis- twisted here out of proportion Tehsin, why don't you step in? No, let's ask Tehsin. He's also there. No, one second. Let's not get into name calling. Let's settle this issue. 
Tehsin Punala. I think what he was trying to say was that if you go I by think, Mr. Uh, Gundu Rao's logic, then one whole community has not evolved because they don't eat pork. That's what he was saying. He did mention that. One second, I I one, second. one second, one second, Mr. I, I, I've known. I've known Abhijit for the longest time and Abhijit would never attack any community, but I'm very disappointed, Abhijit, that at one point he was a communist. I've lost complete respect for you on that <laughs> okay, account. Okay, you okay. Know yeah. that. So I'm glad, you I'm glad, before. I'm glad, Tehseen, you've set the record <laughs> straight. No, I'm, I'm very on happy that you've set the record straight. Uh, this was a malicious attempt, viewers, at distracting from the subject at hand. But I just want to come back. I want to come back very quickly to Tehseen Punala. Tehseen Punala, you also have distanced yourself from Mr. Gundurao. You said that LK Advani paid the price. Will Mr. Gundurao pay the price? I just think that there are Maharashtra elections. I think we must keep politics um, and, and icons like Nehruji, Bhagat Singh Ji and Savarkar Ji out of politics. That's my advice to everybody. People evolve over time. People have different views. We Should action be taken? A show cause be issued? Just asking. Well, I think people have different views and if we start attacking people for their views, then okay. we should attack the present Pradeep government Bandari. for getting ISI Just, into okay. Patan Court. See, different views. They should be attacked for getting ISI into Patan See, I respect okay. Tehseen a lot, but it's too rich of Tehseen to say that Congress party took care of Subhash and the Bose. They openly opposed the India Gate statue. They spied on his family. They never acknowledged that he was the first Azad in Forge, was the first Forge and he was the first Indian Prime Minister. So let's not go towards Bose. I can go forward, but it's a hard and, fact. And, no, my and point and is Pradeep, Rahul, quickly, Rahul quickly, Gandhi. I just want to add just one thing. Remember, Gandhi made Mohandas Karamchan made Bose's presidency miserable, forcing him to resign. Okay, let's look. I, I, Rahul, I, 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 Rahul look, just I'm a not 15, going to 15 that, seconds. But yes, very quickly. Yeah, Rahul, seconds. anybody yes. who appeases and follows Jinnah's strategy of divide and rule is promoted in the Congress Party. You look at the policy of the Karnataka Congress Party. The Chief Minister, in his earlier term, tried to divide the Lingayat vote. He was promoted to again be the Chief Minister. If you remember his alliance partner, Udenidhi Stalin, he said that Sanatan is dengue malaria aid. No action and no word was from the Congress Party. So the more the bigger the appeaser, the more, more you follow Jinnah strategy, the more will you be promoted in well, the Congress party. I, I, just, I just want to know. Tell me, tell me one, one, one second. Whether the UBT yes. Shiv Sena, what is their position today? The Thakres, what are they thinking today as their own icon, self-professed icon, Abhijit Ayer Mitra is being pulled down to the level that he has been by a minister in the Karnataka Congress. Thank you. Thank you, viewers. Watch tomorrow. We'll come back with another big edition and some exclusive footage.